All right, Jake, before we get started on this video, I uh, just want to know that I really want to see more games of you losing. Like, I know you have a lot of close games, but I want to see more of uh, the games that you literally just get wrecked or lose in, like, by a, by a good margin. So we can see, like, what other problems, or not really problems, what other things we can uh, get to work on. Alright, so with that out of the way, let's start watching this video. I'm interested, let me see if my uh, audio is correct. Okay, yeah. Oh god, that song. I don't agree with FD Battlefield and small battlefield to have these musics. It's not a good touch. Anyway. So you're fighting a tuneling, so immediately we can tell that since uh, by matchup you're gonna be uh, trying to walk more in this matchup, and you're gonna try to parry more because um, even though parrying doesn't necessarily give you uh, a big edge. Yeah. Well, you're gonna hit the air. Even though necessarily. It won't give you a big edge. What pairing will do in this matchup, especially against, um, well, uh, more specifically towards the projectile portion of his toolkit, it'll give you uh, more frame data to work with in order to get closer. And Cloud in this matchup has to get closer to Link and pressure him with his tools, his special tools like forward air, back air, you know, stuff like that. And generally speaking, against zoners, you want to uh, you want to be like at mid range against them, because you don't want to be like too close where you can't react, and then too far where you can react but can't really get much off of it. Mid range is perfect. Like uh, let's say about the distance that you guys just started in the match, I think that's perfectly fine. If he throws a boomerang, you can parry that and then dash in with a grab and then predict if he's gonna shield or dash and dash deck. Think he's gonna try to back away or try to attack immediately, stuff like that. So yeah, that's a lot of what zoners are, or their weaknesses, their strengths are that they can command space at will just because they can throw projectiles. And a lot of them tend to have some kind of range in their uh, uh, neutral kit. Like for example, the Lynx have a lot of swords, so they have some range to over you, but normally with swords, they have a little bit more lag than most zoners. So, yeah, we want to just get that out of the way so you have a generalization of what you're going to be dealing with. Um, Toon Link can be technically played in two playstyles. He can be played in the offense, but most of the time he'll be looking more towards the uh, defense. So he'll be staying back and throwing out a lot more projectiles than he will be approaching. Um, he'll probably more likely just use his projectiles to pressure you, condition you, do um, options that will favor him. So typically Toon Links will like to, or Links in general, will like to throw a boomerang to the ground and it'll go upwards to cover your jump or mix up the timing of your shield and parry. Um, they could throw it forward uh, just to cover the uh, mid-range distance and this is where walking is going to play a key role of this matchup. Walking is going to give you access to uh, shield really quickly, and you're going to need that for parrying and blocking. Of course, I'm not telling you you're going to be shielding like 24-7, that's not really how the matchup works. Because obviously they have a grab, and you know, RPS is still exists. So you're going to be mixing up, of course, as how you, uh, how you approach with shield and how you approach in general. Okay, so let's get started. Oh, right, this thing's happening. Alright, there we go. Okay, so you jump in to. Okay, so he's trying to cover where you are instead of where you're going to be. And then you're doing the same. Okay. Uh, you have center stage now, so you want to start pressuring. Um, you can either, at this point, with reaction, call out, um, dash and approach with a dash tag, or you can play the safe game and just walk a little bit forward and shield, or walk a little bit backward and shield and see what they do and uh, play towards the opponent. Okay, so like I said before, they're going to be throwing a lot of projectiles at you. 
this is online, keep in mind, so a lot of the time projectiles might just be a little unreactable, uh, even at mid-range, so keep that in mind. Offline, you can 100% react to those at mid-range, no matter what. Okay, so he's trying to cover now where you're going to be, which is good. Go from the channel lines, this is what we want to see. You jumped over, you have center stage, you rolled away because you're scared. Um, personally, that's not a bad option. Actually, that's pretty pretty good because you're still gathering information. So now you know that in those situations, he likes to react with grab and if he thinks you're going to cheat. Okay. So it looks like he's going to be dash backing a lot in neutral. I could be wrong, it's just a quick analysis of what the few first few frame or a few options he's been using. That's something um, you want to keep in uh, track of because a lot of zoners do tend to dash back because obviously they want to throw the projectiles. So you can just call that out. It, like if you were, went to Elite Smash and you played against like a, a Ness, they'll probably just like dash back, spam, um, side B, right? Uh, Peaky Fire. That's basically what zoning is a lot of the time at low level. So it's pretty easy to deal with. You just walk on, walk around, like I said, and then parry. So yeah, keep that in mind. You always know, want to catch on to habits that are generally um, particular of uh, certain uh, character types. Okay, that was a good call out, but I guess the option was. Bad. So that was a good call out. Okay. So I'm going to expect him to land and then spot dodge. He might have just enough frames to add till or up till he Okay, no. That... I don't know. Team Link does have a little uh, low end lag on a lot of his uh, shenanigans, I will say. And it's just because because he uh he covered off basically every option in that situation. Zoners have such good advantage states, so you have to be careful of that. All right, so this back here is probably either gonna trade with you or completely miss. Nice. Right. Okay. So this is uh one thing you need to look out for. Uh, in this situation right here. Right here. This situation. Um, once they throw out a move, they're more likely to throw out a projectile right afterwards. Either way, um, this dash in, dash back you're going to do. Fine, you can do this, but at least like implement jumping away as well. Because if you just do like that entire dash away, you give him all the stage. And remember when I said Cloud doesn't work that well like that. If he has no stage, he plays a lot worse as a character. He needs all the stage he can get and all the pressure he can apply. Alright, so just uh, keep that in mind. Whenever you're being chased by a boomerang, just jump backwards over it. Because they're still going to have uh, startup uh, frames of him like. And... They can't really punish you at mid range, like I mentioned before. So, yeah, try to keep that distance and stay at mid range as much as you possibly can because it makes it so they have to guess what you're going to do, and that's a lot more uncomfortable towards um, zoners than it is towards uh, sword players. So, you now you just put yourself in a really bad situation. And this is just mostly uh, matchup inexperience, so it's okay for now, but uh, when you're fighting zoners, just keep that rule of thumb in mind. You want to stay in uh, mid-range as much as you possibly can, because that's where their uh, more, more of the weaknesses are. Of course, uh, you have to make it not unpredictable how you get to mid-range, too. Like I said, um, mixing up is really important. It's basically one of the uh, biggest key factors of what a good player is and what a bad player will be. Um, I'm not sure I agree with that option. I know you're trying to call out a jump, but he has the stage advantage, so there's really no reason to commit so hard into something like that. What you could have done instead is just walk forward and shield a little bit, see if he uh, dash attacks or tries to go for a grab, and then you gather information for next time. 
situation you want to wait until they're about to land to the ground up tilt and if they air dodge you should be able to turn around jab or f tilt okay. yeah you're giving him way too much respect you have to go to center like just take the stage if he's giving you free stage take it and I know, like, at first it's going to be daunting, because, like, you have to go outside your comfort zone, and if you get hit, it discourages the action. But keep in mind, learning is about failing. And you're going to fail a lot before you start um, taking stage more. So it's better that you um, go through the experience now than later. <laughs> This is uh, in this scenario, you could have probably gone for the off stage double jump back onto stage down air. The thing that I was talking to you about before, it's a really good option. You should definitely go for it whenever you can. Uh, it's something that Sparko does a lot, like at least a good 50% of the time when he's off stage. He'll try to cover um, uh, what do you call it, two framing with a down air or a recovery that's really in the air with down air. It's really, really good. Rising down air from ledge is so good. Okay, so um, he was shielding. Um, he had no intent of doing anything. You could have gone for a grab there, but it's fine. Uh, just keep that in mind. Whenever someone shields for a long time, they're more than likely feeling anxious and they're just waiting for you to do something. That's really good. You should uh, not. That was really freaking good. I was thinking up tilt, but that's really good. Okay. I will give you that because it, it hit, but if it was a smart player, all they have to do was get outside of your range, wait for your up smash to whip, and then just grab you and throw you back off stage. So be careful of that. Still good shit. Yeah. understand like actually that was really good you mix it up uh, between going on stage and off stage a lot of people tend to just hold in on the stage for no reason it's actually bad because it makes your recovery a lot more linear um, and sometimes it's more worth it to go off stage because it's less likely they'll try to attack you if you've shown that you're gonna go on stage the first time of course at a high level they're gonna be expecting you so it's just for low level. You you want to get out of there. So uh, this is a uh, something you want to keep a, uh, a lookout for. Um, that's fine. Um, it's not too bad there. Uh, you could have a, a, uh, instead just like did a dash back F tilt to cover the air dodge. Because a lot of this game is mostly just covering defensive options once you have advantage. And this game is like really strong in advantage. It's like heavily based on neutral and whoever gets the first interaction takes full control of the face of the match. So um, you want to just keep advancing your advantage state as much as you can by predicting defensive options from players. And a lot of people will air dodge to the stage if you show them you're going to try to attack them in a certain area. And you can use that information to just bait it out and then do a dash back and attack it forward. Like if you had that read um, of dash back, you could have probably F smashed. And he would have been off stage. You have a lot of rage. He probably would have been close to death. Just because F smash is really, really strong. But again, um, I also want to remind you that uh, smash attacks are not something you throw out in neutral. It's something you use for prediction or for covering um, a really bad habit they have. That was a good call. More so a guess. I don't think I've ever seen you jump on a shield once. 
because he charges down there. That was greedy. Um, and those ranges don't do downer. It's better you just shield or roll away because... What do you call it? Mm, well, maybe. Okay, let me check. Let me check with four. I don't want to give you wrong information. You down right here? Uh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, in that situation, don't downer. Like... Oh, um, Toon Link clearly has a stage advantage, he clearly has positional advantage. It's not worth doing such a laggy criminal move there. Um, you probably could have gone away with a double jump, or instant double jump down air, because then you'll have, um, what do you call that? Uh, auto cancel frames, so you could have landed safely like that. But of course, if he reacted, he could back air you off stage, because his back air is lagless and it combos into itself really damn well. But yeah, in that, that situation, you want to just hold shield or try to, um, yeah, just play a little safe. Like, you could do a jump um, forward air onto shield uh, as a response. Or if you think they're going to try to attack you, you could up B, etc. So you don't want to overcommit with anything. That's why I want you to use more like tilts, space tilts, after, uh, of course, and space aerials. Because they're not going to be punished. Especially Cloud, because he's ha he has one of the biggest ranges in the game, and it's also lagless on shield. Like, back is negative 2 if on full hop, and negative 3 on short hop. Fresh, of course, but you know what I mean. Like, it's it's really good for those situations. Good response. Premature advantage. Uh, what do you call it? I'll just say premature advantage strike. I can't find words right now. Anyway, that was uh, really early to try to push advantage. You should have waited a little bit to see what he does in reaction. Because you want, uh, as I told you before in the other concept, let your opponent hang themselves. Because they're going to be in a bad position and you don't have to do anything. And they're more likely going to panic option because they're in a certain bubble of area where they feel threatened. Okay, parry. Um... I don't remember if the second hitbox is going to be here. It doesn't. Okay, so you get pushed. Um, yeah, that's that's a common mistake. Whenever you parry downer from Team Link, uh, there's always going to be a win box, and it pushes you away. Uh, you probably just want to like walk a little backwards, or maybe uh, if you think they're going to shield, you could uh, call it out and go for a grab. <laughs> Uh, please fast forward order. Darn. Okay, so you want to get used to like before you do the forward air, start fast falling, and the moment you input the fastball, you do the forward air. That's usually the timing of how you get that down. But again, practice that in training mode so you actually get it fully down. You really can't ignore stuff like that because um, if you can't time your aerials, you you can't push anything really. You need to time them so where they can't strike you. Yeah, I like that. I was really good. Albeit, um, in those situations, I don't think you should be landing with aerials. Like, right here, he was already charging um, arrow, and then he has boomerang outside waiting to just slap you uh, while it's coming back. So, in those situations, you want to just like land on the ground shield. Um, you're probably going to get hit by the arrow first because he's going to release it quickly to try to catch a landing. And you can parry that and then jump as he's enduring end lag and do a double jump instant down air, which would allow you to just get out of the corner. Uh, or, of course, um, you know, a lot of zoners tend to um, react with shield if they feel uh, threatened after you parried and a move in this kind of area. So you can always grab them too for with a call out. So yeah, keep that in mind. He called you out there. That was really good. A lot of people jump out of pressure in the corner. This is really, really important to understand. Pressure is all about conditioning your opponent into doing an option that'll always suit the opposing player. 
Ooh, that was really good. By him. He probably could have air dashed earlier anyway, so. I don't think Ooh, that was a blade beam opportunity right there. Blade beam opportunity and also a little cross slash. Blade beam probably would have killed, I'm not sure. Um, I haven't really played Cloud to him like that much. It's kind of rare. But, uh,. I know the Toon Link is a little light. He's not really like the heavy kind of character. Yeah. You give him way too much respect there. You could have thrown a forwarder at ledge and see if he jumped and followed him. Always loves to do air on, uh, what do you call it, projectile at ledge, or at least in the corner. That's what it's, what it's called. So good call up there. <laughs> this is really good safe neutral you're playing right now. This is some really good safe neutral. I like it. Keep that up. Stuff like that, I'll praise you for a lot because safe neutral is key to actually overwhelming your opponent. In neutral to making them do the bad move first. Um, strange choice of punish. Uh, you could have probably done a back throw instead, and then you have more stays to work with, and you can pressure them a lot stronger. But either way, this is fine. Keep <laughs> Stage, you can always stall with Mitra being side B uh, at least once. You can't do it more than twice, but uh, keep that in mind. So, like, uh, you want to mix up your recoveries, but that was still really good from you for uh, keeping your double jump. I'm glad you took, uh, took importance on that. Double jump is extremely important for Cloud, and you should always keep it. <laughs> So, uh, Death Stack would have sent him a lot higher up, which would have um, put him in a war situation where you threaten with back air. And if you got the back air off stage, you would die. And he still can't threaten you because you'll recover first. But either way, uh, decent option. That was a Death Stack right there. It wouldn't have killed, but it would send him in a really poor situation. And, uh, what do you call it? They'll be more likely to do more panic options now because they're afraid of dying. Ooh, if that backer hit, that would have been nice. Oh, you had the dash back. You probably didn't read the roll in, but if you reacted um, to the roll, you could have gotten the F tilt and he would be off stage. That was a really good call out. You understand that he was trying to go for the kill. So, in these situations where you're in high percent and they have a really bad. Um, not a lead, the opposite of lead. They're in a really bad spot like this. You have the lead, and they're gonna start trying to throw out kill moves just to kill you. And two links only kill moves are his smash attacks, his forwarder, and up there. So there's really nothing he can threaten you with outside of that. There's a there is back throw, but like if you're in center, it won't kill until probably 170. So you wouldn't need to worry about that. Only if you're like in the corner facing the opposite direction. But yeah, good stuff here, good stuff here. That was a really good spot dodge. If you up smash here, you're done. Yeah. Unfortunate. That's a, that's a grab. Your side be shit. Really good, really good. That was really good. So uh, that's pretty solid, actually. That was that wasn't bad at all. Of course, there are some situational things that um, 
or scenario uh, areas where you could work on. But that's just a matter of experience and then playing the game a lot more in the matchup. So yeah. Um, keep continuing to uh, get better with the character. Um, I don't suggest that you play with uh, more than one character right now. Because uh, as you start growing, you need to um, play the game with a character you're more familiar familiarized than you Wow, I can't say that one. Familiarized? And um, a character that'll play to your uh, um, play style. So just keep playing with Cloud only. Um, you don't need to worry about using Palutena. I mean, of course, if you want to have fun with the game, go ahead. But like, it'll stunt your growth is why I'm bringing importance to this. Then using two characters that are um, vastly different not only damages your growth, but it just uh, makes it a lot harder for you to understand situations with uh, one character because then you'll try to be the same um, skill sets with one character using different options like you'll try to do the same thing you're doing with cloud with um, Palutena and it won't do uh, good at all but yeah uh, just keep that in mind and that's fine okay um that's first message this one is the second one right one, two, three. Okay, I guess you're from the Inkling now. That's a different matchup. So in this matchup, you want to look out for Bear. It's his fastest and disjointed move. It leads to his combo game and his grab as well. Um, up throw up air on a platform stage like this is really strong. They could potentially get like uh, up to 60% of damage if they really, if they're really good at execution. Um, upside is you have the range game and you have the pressure game here. So, yeah, and uh, don't let them be comfortable trying to uh, charge their um, their ink because they're going to be using that for splat bombs, which are going to be devastating against Cloud at the ledge. Uh, his options are extremely limited in those situations and um, they could potentially give you a down tilt at ledge. So, in this matchup, you want to really like. Mix up your recovery a lot more, and then you want to uh, try to be as low as possible when you up B. <coughs> Ugh, Jesus. <laughs> Just got off the shower. <laughs> no, it happens to me. Alright, so, um, what else is there to note here? You have the range game, you have the pressure game. Uh, you're better. You're a lot better with stage control than Inkling is. You kill a lot earlier than he does. Inkling is slippery. He's very small, so he's harder to hit. So you're gonna want to use, um, let's see, you're gonna use a lot more down tilt dash attacks, and you're gonna be using a lot more uh, low low landing back air. Of course, this makes it easier for the opponent to parry you because you'll have the same timing. But um, uh, you can always change up the timing of your aerial anyway. And back air, remember that while you're facing backwards, they're going to think you're back airing, but you can always empty, lo uh, empty land um, grab, which is perfectly fine. And you want to use F tilts in this matchup as well, just because, um, what do you call it? Say for low end leg moves, they're going to do you a lot more against this character. Uh, you might you might want to be calling out a lot of his jumps. Um, a lot of inkling players tend to play neutral with back air a lot. So they're going to be jumping a lot, just like Cloud. So you want to call that out. And yeah, that, I think that's it that I can remember of. But uh, either way, let's get started. Alright. Forward air is going to be your best friend here too, actually. Now that I think about it. Because it goes to the ground if you fast fall correctly. And it's really hard for them to deal with. Alright. Um... He had advantage, he didn't use it. Um, that's a really, really bad situation. Oh, okay, that that happened. Yeah, he should have jabbed you there. No, nope. don't get antsy. I know you're in the corner, but don't get antsy. Just use F tilt, F tilt or down tilt if you think they're gonna approach you from the ground. But um, yeah. 
Continue. Nope. Uh, that's good. Um, if you auto cancel down air, you can potentially get a back air combo, by the way. Uh, just throwing that out there, because I know you like to use down air a lot, but I want you to use them safer, safer and uh, actually get something out of them. Okay, good. You can grab them. Oh, that was fine. You chase them, um, which would have been fine if you uh, got the correct timing down of when he was going to try to land. Because, uh, once you're up, you um, all you have to do is just drop down up there. You didn't have to double jump there. Uh, that was actually the problem. Yep. Oh, right, Roller. I completely forgot this character had that move. I don't get to play against Inkling that often. Alright, so Roller. Hey, it's more of a call out move. Online, it can be a little annoying because it's hard to react to if you're constantly moving. So, you want to take it a little slow. Uh, when you think they're going to try to use Roller, they mostly use it as a panic option, but good players will uh, use it when you're in tech situations and use it as a read to try to kill you early with. Keep in mind that the ink on the ground does slow your movement on the ground. So whenever there's ink on the ground from the roller, just uh, you might want to start using more jump approaches. But keep it ambiguous, you know, you can always do instant dash attacks to make him think, oh, well, he's going to jump, and then you answer it on the dash attack, so, you know, you can do stuff like that. Uh, no, I don't agree with that. You should have um, made a fake chase with up air. You could have done, like, uh, instant full hop up air, and then fast fell and see where they landed, and then try to... Uh, pressure that area with up air. Uh, you want to start approaching their back airs now because they're jump he's starting to jump a lot more from the corners. Um, in general, he's starting to jump a lot more. Um, he wants to approach a lot more near the air now. So uh, you need to call those things out. That's something Cloud is extremely good at because his back air is just stupid on the way it works. It goes from down to up. So it covers a lot of um, vertical range for no reason while covering a ton of horizontal range. Um, okay, you don't, I don't think you can grab it. Uh, up he probably would have hit though. Uh, I mean, it would have worked out. I don't agree with it though. That was a really good nair. Okay, so one thing I want to talk to you about now, now that you're reminding me of that really good nair. Um, whenever the opponent is on the platform and you did a landing upper, like you did a short hop landing upper to pressure shield, uh, you can follow up with a um, uh, fadeback nair, uh, short hop fadeback nair. It's really good at covering the defensive option that comes afterwards, and you don't put yourself at risk at all. So yeah, keep that in mind. And if you have a read on the platform, you can always go for an up smash. Um, if it misses, you don't really lose much. Um, you lose an opportunity to kill, but uh, outside of that, you, you're not going to be put in disadvantage if you go for a read. Because platforms in itself is a disadvantageous spot to begin with. Uh, no, no, that was really risky. That was really risky. Um, don't do things like that. Cloud can't really risk something like that. Uh, what you can do is, uh, what I mentioned before is the down air. Uh, jumping, double jump from ledge or down air. Really good cover. Um, uppies like those. And if you time it right, you get the spike. And if you don't, well, they still die anyway at, like, that high percent. Ooh, okay. Um, let me see the scenario again. Okay, so that was the problem there. You gave him space, but you didn't try to, like, make him feel pressured for trying to go inside the space. So how to do that is you do the same thing you just did, right? You dashed away, but you did a you would do a short hop landing back air as well. 
to tell them, okay, if you go in this area, I will attack you. And then it's going to make them feel like, okay, well, i got to be careful now. And they're going to lower their defenses a lot more now. Because they're going to be like, uh, well, I'm kind of scared. I don't know what he's going to do. But he's pressuring me, so I need to do something. And for the most part, that's how you start getting people to start hanging themselves in neutral. That was a call out from both sides, actually. Alright, so in this situation, you're an like you're gonna shield, okay. Um, if he back airs, don't try to grab. I don't think you can even up the award here. Let me see. Let's go to ultimate frame data real quick. I haven't checked them in from this back air in a long time. They're a dying breed, I swear. Uh, Inkling. Uh, here we go. I know their back air is stupid good, though. Back air is negative two to the ass. Okay, so if you're up, he's not gonna do anything up on landing. So don't even try to challenge that move. What you can do is uh, spot dodge up B though if you think they're gonna land with back air. Oh, that was a really good down air. He didn't shield, so he was Okay, so what could you have done? I guess you could have shield. Uh, there was no way of knowing what he was going to do next anyway, so it's fine. Uh, you can detect those, by the way. You're not taking that many things at all. Um, that'll really help your game out, because then it, it's a lot harder to react to when you do a tech option. And the opponent has to guess, so they have to read. And you have, like, three different tech scenarios. If you tech in... Um, and they try to dash in to attack you, they'll miss. If you take out and they try to cover one area, then they'll miss. Uh, you know, keep that in mind. That was a good you need to take stage there. Like I, I know you have a lot of stage now, but if he, if you start charging around like you're doing now, and he gets in, he can start coming back out for free, and you don't want that. You want to keep pressuring them. That was extremely risky from you. If you got hit by that up smash, that was probably your stock, because Inkling can edge guard the living shit out of Cloud, actually. You want to be careful with the options you choose. In that situation, I think it was better if you just like waited a little bit and down tilted. Or jumped a uh, short hop and threatened with uh, forward air. Uh, we tech those. <sighs> that option was really bad. You could have shielded instead. That was a good wait. That was a really good wait. I can run that. Um, let's get going. You could have edge guarded. He wasn't doing anything. You could have 100% when he cross slashed her. He wasn't expecting anything. Um, you still have positioning here, and you just got limit right, so you should still have like 10 seconds or so left. So you should use that time to pressure. And whenever you have a limit, you also gain a boost in mobility, which is really good. Makes the character a lot more threatening. No, not like that. Not like that at all. One thing is that it wouldn't have killed at all, even with bad DI. And then, second thing, you just put yourself off stage for no reason. So, now you give him a ledge trapping and edge guarding position advantage. Okay. That was a really odd option for both of you. You really need to use more back air neutral. Like that's Cloud's probably most brain dead and broken tool in neutral. Just throwing back airs upon landing and mixing up um, 
timing up back here too. Like uh, that that move is really really good. You really need to learn how to use that move in the big show. It would have been a good opportunity at lower percent. It'll give you that. Unfortunately, that platform was in the way, so he probably could have still chased though. Um, did he slide off, or did he just go on the platform and then went off? Okay, he slid off, so it didn't matter. That was crazy. That was still a good mix-up. Um, I'm kind of surprised you didn't catch me with that forwarder. You usually last for a, a, quite a few good amount of frames there, even the weak hit. Let me see that forwarder. It's active, yeah, for a good, good 10 frames or 11. Weird. Either way, you recovered. That's what matters. <laughs> Yeah, we need more of those. We need more of the landing ones and mix up with the rise. And you also want to mix up with fastballs. And don't be afraid either to like pretend you're gonna do a fastball back here and just like grab instead. You know, that's a, that's always an option. You want to condition it to shield anyway, so that's something Cloud is really good at doing. <laughs> towards the stage and you'll put yourself still in a really good advantageous situation. You'll cover most of their options just by doing that when they're on the platform. Really good mix up, I like it. You see you mix up so hard on him now off stage that he's like afraid to even take a guess. That's that's kind of the goal you want to have. Of course, high level, high level players won't be afraid to attack you. They're still going to try to cover options where they think they're, you're going to be at. But uh, that was really good. You're mixing up your recovery a lot better than last time for sure. Really good shit. You're actually just playing out of your mind right now. And this is really good. So you want to review this match in particular a lot more. So you can see um, what you're doing good that you can implement in your other matches. Take a lot of the good and find some of the bad, but like take a lot of the good that you've done here and implement to your matches. But so far, really good shit so far. Oh, I am happy that you're starting to use a lot more backer. But you're going a bit too far away from person now, so you're giving them free advantage for no reason. You want to maintain the pressure that you have with back air with like up tilt as well, because he's jumping a lot. And uh, really, whenever you have someone in a shield situation, most of the time if they don't have an up yet a shield, they're going to jump away. So characters like Joker, Palutena, Inkling, um, yeah, characters like those where they don't have anything out of shield. Except for like their back ears and stuff like that. Um, really good to call them out with a uh, back ear. And up tilt, if you do a landing back ear at, on shield, because they might jump. And if, if, you do, if they do jump, you know, you just continue to rush them. I'm liking the F tilts. There are a lot safer tools. I'm liking. Really 
Ooh, that was kind of risky, bro. That was kind of risky, not gonna lie to you. Yeah, I might want to play a little safer in the ledge, like, you know, like before. You really need to, like, chill with the S these F smashes, my guy. Like, they're, I know you want to kill them, but, like, if you make it obvious, they're going to play around it. Um, that's one of the things you want to keep in, uh, in, in uh, conscious mind of. You don't want to make your uh, trying to kill the opponent obvious. Like, the kill, for the most part, will come to you as long as you just continue playing neutral. It'll come to you. You don't have to force it. The moment you start forcing kill scenarios is the moment the opponent will catch on to you. They'll start making a comeback. And you're going to probably just lose stocks for it. Just play it safe, play neutral, let the kill come to you, don't force it. Um, probably because it's online you didn't react to it, but either way. Um, after the first lady, you could just run in and did up air, because he was 100% for sure going to uh, tech roll in. Because he's done it most of the time. Or you could have gone for the up smash earlier. Oh no. No. Stop doing those things. Forwarder is a really laggy move. If you want to really desperately use an aerial while you're rising, you can always turn around with side B and then jump uh, back air. Alright, that wasn't bad. That was, that was pretty good. You were feeling yourself. You're doing pretty good. There's still some things you could have done better, but either way, good shit, dude. Good shit. I'm liking what I'm seeing. Alright, uh. So, what's this one? Alright, so this is Palatina. This is probably going to be one of your harder matchups, just because back here in Daft Stack, they kind of eliminate a lot of your neutral tools, and you're going to start have to walk a lot more, call out um, their jumps, because Palatina, if it's not dash attack, they're going to aerial. And you want to get the timing of when they like to jump, and just back at them, and then mix up the timing so they get confused on when to do aerials, and you can start pushing advantage. The other tools, that they have at their disposal is uh, Explosive Flame, which is side B, and Auto Radical, which is neutral B. Explosive Flame catches dashbacks. They're really good at catching dashbacks and dashing in approaches. So you want to be ambiguous as to how you approach and how you play defense. Otherwise, Explosive Flame is going to kill you. Like It is actually just going to capitalize on your bad defensive habits. Alright, so Auto Radical is just an approach option. It's uh, an option that forces approaches. Same thing can be applied to side B, um, but it, it's more so just kind of that and then a good anti-air tool sometimes. Um, the way you beat both of these options is, is uh, by expecting them to come out. If you think they're going to use the option, you just dash in and then it'll completely miss. They'll be in a really bad end lag and you can just punish them. Alright, so uh, what are the tools you want to look out for? Explosive Flame, as I explained to you why. Auto Radical, as I explained to you why. Dash Attack, it's really good at catching the dash in approaches. And it's a really good anti air tool. It's, it's invincible while, while it's active. So if you try to challenge it, you're going to lose every time. So uh, this is something that you want to beat by using uh, the dash in mix ups. Uh, you can dash attack or you can dash and shield. That'll beat it, typically. That's how you beat the, uh, the mix up that they have with that stack. And uh, the other option that's really a pain in the ass is going to be uh, back air. It's the same thing as dash attack, except it's just a lot better. It can cover dash ins, but it can also cover aerial approaches. It'll always beat it out. So, uh, like I said before, stopping that is uh, understanding when they like to jump and catching them out, calling them out for it, and discouraging the habit, and make them uh, be a lot more grounded, which is one of their worst areas to play in, but it's still not bad for Paul Payne at all because she has really good aerial mobility and ground mobility. Um, other option is um, grab. Down throw is a lot of mix-ups now after the nerf. 
she uh, she still has to confirm at like 90 or so against your character, but it's a lot harder to pull off. Uh, that makes ups for uh, getting on a grab and back throw or down throw is going to be uh, DI in, DI up and away, DI out and away, and DI out and down. Um, if you DI in, and that's for reading uh, approaching nares or back airs, um, you get to bypass it. You can, uh, if you're expecting that they're going to try to go for the confirm, you can always uh, jump away too. Or air dodge, actually. I think if you're air dodge, you have enough time for that. You shouldn't have frame for air dodge. Let me check. You are cloud. You're, you kind of surprise me every time. So uh, it can happen if you have a frame four or five air dodge. Uh, let me check right here. Air dodge. Reach your air dodge. Frame three. Okay, so you're fine. Uh, if you think they're going to attack you out of down throw, you can air dodge, you'll be fine. Um, if you think they're going to go for up smash, you need to DI out. If you think they're going to go for um, fade back nares, you need to DI out. If you think they're going to try to keep a back air uh, close range, you need to DI out from down throw. Alright, the next throw at ledge is back throw. It's a really strong kill throw. Actually, it kills like at 130 at ledge and like maybe 150 or 170 at center. So you want to keep in mind that. Um, there, you can respect that. It's not like a really busted tool, but it's omega good. Like, you need to respect that or call out their jump. Um, keep in mind against Nair, if you think they're going to do a rising approaching Nair, you can shield, and then at the last hit of Nair, you can parry, and you can actually punish them with a bash attack. Or even a cross slash. Because they're going to be uh, using, or undergoing their uh, aerial and landing lag, so. Yeah, um, what else? Uh, up air is actually bigger than you think. Remember, if you see the angel thing on the up air, the angelic wings, that is actually the entire hitbox, and it goes a little higher up. So be careful. Um, you uh, When you're in disadvantage in the air like that, you're going to have to use fastball air dodges to get through it if you think they're going to go for up air. Um... And this character has just a lot of things. She has a tool, uh, a neutral, like, actually. So I'm, I'm taking the time to explain them to you. Uh, because it's really important. Because this character is very common. Uh, high level play, a top level play, a mid level play, even at low level play, this character is extremely common. Uh, let's see here. Uh, up B. Her recovery at ledge she has the up B mix up she can uh, jump up B to stage if she thinks you're gonna try to cover the ledge um, let's see here what else off stage her nair beats up basically every option it's it's dummy good it kills at like 150 now instead of 130 which is better because that move should never even have killed that ledge honestly for what it does at least uh, let's see here. I think that's for the most part it, actually. Yeah, I think that's all that you need to worry about. It's a lot of information, but um, just take it one step at a time and you'll get there. You never want to give yourself too much information to try to work with because you will never be able to have like 10 things you need to learn and finish them in one day. You need to space this out, learn, um, try to learn one thing every day or put some um, time into it, at least. Okay, so her neutral tools on the ground are actually not that bad. They may be laggy, but they're pretty big and very disjointed. So, um, just uh, try to play at mid-range, for the most part. Mid, yeah, mid-range, long-range. Um, getting in her CQC range is a little dangerous, just given the fact that her mobility is just really strong. And her defense game is pretty decent. Okay, so um, downer is actually laggy. You could punish that with a uh, side B. All you have to do is uh, uh, okay, okay. Before I even give you the app, the option, uh, keep in mind. Like I told you before, dashing is a lot more committal than walking. 
So if you're dashing, you have less options and you gain your options back after you uh, get into the run animation, which I think for Cloud is like 10 frames of initial dash animation frames first. It could be 13 as well, like, I don't, I'm not really entirely sure. Most of the cast has 10 typically. Very few have 13 and very few have uh, 15. And there's only like two or three that have seven, which is like Sheik and some other characters. But uh, if you dash, you, you're limited in options at the beginning of the dash. So whatever they throw out instantly is going to beat you out and during your dash. Um, what you can do is uh, shield, or not shield, walk, cross slash. If you walk cross slash in that situation in particular, um, you instantly punish them. You won't be punished. Or if you did an instant dash attack, that also might just wreck. But in that situation, I think shielding is just the best option because after you shield their attack, you can off you them. Keep in mind that uh, Palatina's aerials are actually pretty lagless, especially safe on shield too. Um, even down there too is actually safe on shield, surprisingly enough. So let's go to the ultimate. Green Data is our best friend, best friend in the world. Palutena, a very meta dominant character. Uh, let's see here, Palutena. Oh, click on the game. Ew. There we go. All right, so back here. Forward air is negative three on shield, negative two on full hop. Back here is negative five on shield, negative four on full hop. So uh, you will not be able to punish them with up beam unless they landed poorly. Down air is negative seven, so that you can 100% up B. Um, most people don't even time that properly anyway, so yeah. That's the upper, by the way. Just, just uh, want to show you. It's uh, pretty big. It's, it's actually just really big. Extremely big, actually. So yeah, I'm gonna respect that. Right air is also ginormous. That's why it works so really well, because it's just giant. Back air is also pretty big and has uh, intangibility. You see the this here, this part right here. It's green and means intangibility. All right. Um, what else has intangibility? Dash attack, right? Okay, I want to show you that too. Dash attack. Green. See, tangibility. Her arm still has intangibility. And it goes away at the end. Alright. So yeah, keep in mind, these arrows, safe on shield. You'll never be able to punish them unless they are sailed. And let's continue. You see? Really good move. You want to respect it. If you're in CQC range, you can just throw that out, and if you're not ready for it, it, it'll just go through whatever anything you throw out, really. That's why I say it's really good to be in mid-range, because she still doesn't have any options ex outside of uh, her first option, which would be dash attack. That'll beat it, and I told you the answer to that is just uh, um, dash and shield, or dash and or dash, dash attack, or dash and grab if you think they're going to shield instead. It's, it's basically just a mix-up tree there. You have to play RPS to really beat dash attack there. Nope, bad option. In that situation, you wait a little bit to see what their option is. Oh yeah, limit uh, blade beam is actually going to come in handy. Uh, it can be a really good distraction tool if uh, you think they're gonna do side B. It'll cut them off before the demon comes out. Yep, stay in that mid range. You can react to whatever option she does afterwards if you uh, don't do anything reckless. Unfortunate, you reacted with a uh, premature neutral B because um, you didn't think you were gonna have limit at that time. Like I said before, it catches dashes in, so you need to be careful. They're always mixed up. Maybe not all level players, they'll probably just do it at random. But uh, definitely be careful of that option. I'm going to get 
Okay, so you almost always know for certain that they're gonna up me. Um, one thing you can do against up me in particular at ledge. Do you remember the uh, double jump down here I was talking about down ledge? Uh, teleport recoveries have actually four frames before they grab a ledge. Um, so if you time it. You don't even have to time it perfectly fine, right, uh, relatively good. If you mistime it, it'll probably still hit, and you should definitely go for it. It's worth it. You might even be able to dash attack there, too, if you can time that. But uh, down there is super good against uh, teleport recoveries. That's a really good back throw right there. I thought he was going to down throw to a combo turn. Alright, so now you're in this situation, your options are limited, if she, uh, if you think they're gonna try to attack, you can always get up attack, but here you want to probably go for a B, it's uh, unreactable from jump. Uh, the other option you have is uh, jump air dodge, or neutral air dodge. Um, and the other option that you have is waiting, seeing what their option is. And try to catch them off guard. Okay. That was a really weird option, but you know, they got the job. You should have stopped right there. Because um, if you see them drifting backwards, you can react to that. And if you stop and wait, you can see if they're going to go in, and then you can punish that accordingly as well. Or you can pressure them more. That's why I told you stop right there. It's perfect time, perfect place, center stage. There's nowhere anywhere better than that place right there to see what they're going to do in, in that kind of area. Yeah. Really bad counters getting on to Paladin here. You're not waiting. You're starting to do options out of reaction. You should wait more. If you if you did a down smash, you would have caught it. Oh well. Alright, so... Paul has like to there here. Oh, we're back here, depending on Paul and player's preference. So, probably neutral air dodge in this uh, situation. And then up be towards ledge, and you should be fine. Or the Paul and player can just not take care of advantage at all. You know, you could just let go of advantage. Oh, that's true. Side view is a thing off stage. You have to, yeah, air dodge, like I said, is a perfectly acceptable answer to those things. Yeah. Uh, yeah, <laughs> you went for it. It was really bad, but you went for it, you know. Practice that off stage. Um, on training mode, you should, you should get that down pretty fast. Not a really hard timing at all. Uh, you 100% could have upbeat that uh, downer. That was a really badly uh, timed downer. Oh, that's your Nice. Oh, you really good, baby. I'd be 
playing way too comfortable now. Like you're you're like not even thinking at this point. You're just trying to cover options and buy reaction. I mean, it's good in its own right, but it's bad in, uh, once you're at CQC range. You're you're no longer giving your time to uh, just uh, you're not blech, you're no longer giving yourself time to think, which is very essential in this game. Okay, so you could tell he was going for like that move a lot. What you can do is purposely go in its range and then dash in. And then you could just get a dash attack if you wanted to. Or maybe an F smash even, honestly. Because it's really lagging if you call it out. <laughs> I just not air dog. I think he's so used to like, like he's probably so used to countering or just up uh, being away from situations, because he he never wants air dogs this entire match. I don't think. Um, down or there, or just wait. You can always dart down tilt as well. Into this, I'm trying to see. Yeah, that's understandable. I used to do that, but uh, if you want to grow, you gotta watch the game that uh, you get destroyed in. It's the only way you're gonna grow. Cause uh, well, like you, you can watch games that you do good in. You can do that, but it doesn't offer you the same uh, viewpoint uh, in the games you lose. All right. This looks like hero. Short match. They probably dominated him. Um, going into the match, Hero is a laggy character, um, aerial-wise, very laggy, so he'll be maneuvering and spacing as he lands, and he's going to be relying on his uh, mechanic, which is going to give him the boosts and buffs necessary to uh, really push advantage. Either way, you have to respect side B, um, you have to respect um, neutral B. Jab is actually fairly fast, I'm not going to lie to you, it's a really good anti-air tool. Um, what else? Nair, you gotta respect that too. It's not like the best Nair in the world ever. It's not like, not the worst either. It's just something you have to keep in mind of. But uh, yeah, they're gonna probably be using a lot more mobility and uh, being punished with um, their long range tools like side B um, and down B a lot. I honestly don't really have much to say in this matchup, other than you have really good range, and you can abuse that, and then you just play the match a lot better than Hero does. Uh, you just have to play patient, really. Like, uh, if you if you try to go in non-stop, and they find a counterplay, you kind of just get bopped. So you want to be careful with what you do, because a lot of their moves are unreactable, especially online. They become basically unreactable, even at long ranges sometimes. So yeah, um, that's really not that much on Hero. And I don't really know much of the character outside of that, because I don't really play that many players like that. For Hero, at least. I play more players that use just, like a lot of the uh, higher tier and top tier characters. The Hero is definitely high tier, don't get me wrong. It's actually a really good character, it's just not like brained or anything. Yeah, if you see Salem, he does really well with the character. Okay, that was an interesting combo, but you know, the character doesn't really have anything fast, so I guess you can go for that. It was a good call out. Um, bad spacing there. Alright, so this hero player is actually not giving himself time to think at all, he's just throwing up left. Yeah, this is why I'm telling you the so many games where you lose. Because stuff like this, you, there's not really much to comment on. Because all I can really give you is like little tidbits of fixes you can do, but it doesn't really help because um, you're already dominating. There's really nothing to look at here. That's 
one of the big reasons why I want you to in the games you're losing. And it's perfectly okay to watch the games you lose because that's where you're going to find a lot of the ways you're going to learn uh, through your own losses. And remember that failure is key to success. That's just how it is. No one was ever like talented and just picked up something and immediately got good with it. It, it always um, took sacrifice and time to get there. Uh, there, instead of cross slashing, uh, back air would have been better. It stays out for a lot longer, and you can also drift with it. You're over committing too much after you use cross slash. You need to be careful. That down smash was unnecessary, which you could have done instead because he's shielding. You could uh, continue pressuring by furthering that. By using a drop down up air, it's really strong. And like I mentioned before, after you do a drop down up air, you can do fade back nears towards the stage, and you'll be safe and you'll still be in a really good advantageous position. Uh, you 100% can uh, go for a punish. His recovery is uh, very vulnerable to down air. It's susceptible to back air even if you time it right. But uh, down air is better, like I said, because it's just safer, it doesn't risk your character. Um, you probably can go for back air edge guards as long as you have climb hazard uh, limit version variation. But most of the time you're just going to go for down airs anyway because your character can't have limit for more than 15 seconds. And that's not a lot of time to reliably edge guard people. So yeah. <laughs> That's weird. Um, Backer isn't safe. It's literally one of his most powerful tools. Well, not in neutral, but like one where his one more of his uh, stronger tools, I would assume that they would have like some kind of uh, frame advantage on Chio. Probably he mistimed it. Uh, what's his name again? I forget. Um, Hero. Wow, backer's negative nine. Well, you can one hundred percent outdo that. Forward air 7. If spaced, you probably can't up beat that. Shield comes out frame 8. Or frame 1. But the actual shield comes out frame 2. Negative 6 in there. Oh, okay. So you can just up beat this character once his moves get stale. Really poorly done back here there. Just go for downers. your recovery pathway too linear. You want to drift back and then up B. You don't want to hold in the entire time because it's really easy to edge guard that. Should do more of that because like uh, landing with nothing is a mix up uh, in its own in its own right, and it's really good too. Because uh, if you land with an aerial, you're an end lag, and sorties that land with aerials and end lags suck. No point, no, no point, no. Point, no. 
You need to chill with your callouts, because you're doing them way too early. Just wait a little bit more. What you can do instead is jump at them and then go back to stage to see what they react with. That was a very confusing camera angle there. Damn, he died in. What the heck? What was that? Yeah, he died in. Why would you do that? There's no reason to do that. Cloud can't kill with upbeat until like, what, 100 at lunch? That's really bad. He should have just died out. But yeah, certain games where you lose, because then I'll have situations like uh, the edge guard thing, right? You did you lose that stop? <laughs> Whenever you're in these situations, and uh, most of the time when you're losing uh, games, we'll see these kind of things more often, which is exactly what I want to see. Because uh, when I get to see you lose, that means I can see why you're losing, what you can improve on, and how you can start building your consistency. So yeah, so any more games where you lose, it's, it's more important than games where you win, for sure, 100%. And don't be afraid, everyone loses. It's just a part of life. MKLeo loses, not all the time, but he loses, you know? He loses here and there. It's expected. No one can be winning nonstop. But yeah, that's pretty much it for the video today. But yeah, give me some games that you lose. I want those so I can uh, help you out more. <laughs>